Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I wanted to go over some memory verses. Um, just do a little segment every day, or not every day, <laughs> I wish, uh, about once a week. Try to do some memory verses, and if I can do it outside, mainly wanted to do it here. The bench that Brother in Christ put together for me that I used to sit on when I was a little kid, uh, with thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right. So if you want to turn to James, one five. Right. There's actually two verses here that people like to memorize separately, not realizing that they actually go together, hand in hand. Right. So let's read it. If, when she's ready to sit down. You ready to sit down? Let me help. <laughs> she's getting old, but she's still with me. Thank the Lord. So James, and then she's back up. James 1.5 If any of you lack wisdom, now notice the word there is wisdom, not knowledge. Wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. A lot of people like to stop there. Okay? The reason I said wisdom is remember what we talk about, brothers and sisters in Christ, when it comes to head knowledge. I like to try to, the world likes to use the word intellect. You can have head knowledge. You can know something. But when that knowledge is applied to your life, come, makes it down to your heart, and is applied to your life, you now have wisdom. You can prove yourself to be wise, or you can prove yourself to be a fool, foolish. Fool said in his heart, there is no God. A fool is lost, but acting foolishly. You can be wise, or you can be foolish. Okay? That's why it says lack wisdom. You get to a point in your life saying, Lord, I don't know what to believe. I'm being told 50 million different things, and I don't know how to apply this to my life. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's wisdom starts with head knowledge and it goes down to your heart and becomes wisdom because you apply it to your life. If any of you lack wisdom, Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, what do I do? You ask God. Okay? Let him ask of God. Not men, not mankind, but God. Okay? And I always say through his perfect written word because this is how God, through the Holy Spirit, will open his word and point you in the right direction and show you what you're supposed to be doing, how you're supposed to be living, what you're supposed to be believing and standing for physically in this life. Okay. Let they give it to all men liberally and it not and it shall be given to him. Verse 6, I've had people say, but I've asked God for wisdom. He just won't talk to me and everything. Let's get to verse 6. But, okay, let him ask in faith. A lot of people want head knowledge. I just want the, the fast food version. Okay, I want to take the shortcut. They're not asking in faith. They don't really want to know the truth. They don't want to do the right thing. They just can't face... It's like saying, you have to go this direction. They know they have to go this direction. But instead, they want to go that direction. So they're like, Lord, what do I do? Lord saying that direction. But Lord, what do I really do? Lord, I just don't know what to do. And the Lord's pointing there. But Lord, I just don't know. You gotta ask in faith. There's some people that don't do that. They go in with preconceived ideas of what they want to believe, how they want to live their life, what they want to do. They don't come to the book saying, Lord, you tell me what to do and I'll do it. Even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's hard, even if it's what I don't want. If it's what you want, Lord, I'm going to do it. Let him ask of faith, nothing wavering. You have so many people out there that, that, Lord, I want wisdom. I want wisdom. They want head knowledge, but they have no intention of living a life of Christ. Putting on Jesus Christ fully and completely. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. God's not talking to you. Are you asking him faith? Are you going into it with obedience? Lord, I trust you. What do I do? Lord, I trust you. You know, you get the brethren were getting into fights over 
not using Trinity, the word Trinity, the title Trinity, because it's not found in Scripture. Just Godhead. Lord, what do I do? Show me the Scriptures. Okay, it's Godhead. So I believe in the Godhead. I'm going to reject the Trinity. And you get people fighting and arguing over that. And they say, and they're the people that, that, that claim to be Bible-believing. I'm trying to keep my spot. They're claiming to be Bible-believing. And you're like, where is it at in Scripture? What is it? They're the people that don't have faith or have faith in the wrong thing. They don't have faith in the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. They have faith in the lowercase g God that likes to pose as Jesus Christ all the time. Counterfeit Jesus Christ. Okay? It says for let no, verse 7 says, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. He won't. You have to come in faith. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him. Okay. It's that simple. But let's keep reading. Here's another memory verse that people have memorized, but they don't put this all together in one. First, you have people who memorize, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and it prayeth not, and it shall be given him. And they don't, they don't read verse 6, where it says, but let him ask of faith. And they don't make it all the way down to verse 8, where it says, in 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We always use that we see these people that claim that they have a love of the truth, they, they, they ask God for wisdom, I want wisdom, I want wisdom, and you look at how they're living their life, and their life does not line up with their words. They say one thing, and they do another. They claim they want wisdom, they want to be wise, but they've chosen the world. They really don't want truth. God, give me truth. Give me the truth I want. Tell me what I want to hear. And you start looking at these professing, Bible-believing, God-fearing men, and some with women, and you look at the life that they're living, and something just doesn't line up. What are you dealing with? You're dealing with somebody who's truly double-minded. That's what it means by a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He says he wants truth. He says he wants wisdom. But what they really want is to live of, of the world. The lust of the flesh. Their way. They want their truth. They already go into it saying, this is what I want to believe. Oh God, show me the truth. You know, wink, wink. And I'm just going to believe what I want to believe. That's a double-minded man. And we've seen those types of people, brothers and sisters of Christ, online. They say one thing, they do another. I'm a Bible believer. How can you call yourself a Bible believer and when someone tells you, uh, well, you need to stop using the word Trinity, it's not in the Bible as a title for God. And they start throwing the biggest fit in the world. What is that? That's a double-minded man. You're supposed to go to God for wisdom. God chose the title Godhead. When it comes to eternal security, you got people that attack eternal security. The Bible teaches that today, for today, we are eternally secure. Once God seals you, you can't seal yourself. When God seals you, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Right now, I've said it before, brethren have said it that's in ministry, uh, you're only two-thirds redeemed. This body of flesh, a sinful flesh, is capable of sin and has sinned. Uh, I am a sinner. And it's not just me saying it, I just, I feel awful now that I'm saved every time I sin and fall away from the Lord. All right? Brothers and sisters in Christ, you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, show me the truth. You got people that attack it, and people that attack it, and attack it, and they claim to be Bible-believing Christians. The fear of the Lord, I talked about a study about that, uh, that I, I'm going to be putting out also. Uh, we talked about fearing the world over fearing God, and you start ended up obeying the world, the powers that be, over the ultimate power that is, not be, is, which is Jesus Christ, and you start listening to the world's commands and doing things the world's way over God's way, and it comes down to fear. Do you fear the Lord? You're supposed to have faith. It says, ask in faith, and you get these double-minded men, and one of the things I've seen that go in, even though it's not mentioned in this verse, that I see that goes hand in hand with this, brothers and sisters of Christ, is there's no fear of the Lord. They don't fear God. They'll say it. 
but their life doesn't show it. They don't fear God. Nah, God will forgive me. Nah, it's, uh, who are you to judge me? We come across those people. Who are you to judge me? I don't want to steer too far away, but remember, for this talk, Brothers and Sisters Christ, make sure to read the context. Read the whole thing. You're, you're, you're supposed to seek wisdom. Lord, how am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to act? How am I supposed to talk? Okay? My beliefs that are in my heart, do they line up with your book, Lord? Perfect written word, King James Bible. You go to him seeking wisdom that's knowledge that gets applied and your, makes it down to your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The little plaque I've got on this. Thy word have I hid in my heart. It has to be hid here, not here. And when you hide it here, it shows by the life that you're living. God's word is reflected because you start living it. You're putting on Jesus Christ, who is the capital W word, the manifest word. This is the written word. Okay? So hopefully this has helped some of the brethren out there to not forget that context is everything. Ask God for wisdom. Keep your prayer life going. Okay? He will, it says that he will give, that let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. But you've got to ask of faith, and true faith is saying, Lord, point me in the right direction, and my heart's desire is that's the direction I want to go. I want to go your direction, Lord. Point me up. Lord, I want to go your direction, not my direction, not the world's direction. Your direction, Lord. Direct me. And I always tell people it comes back to the heart, that heartfelt attitude that when you come to the Lord asking and seeking wisdom, your heartfelt attitude is, is I want to please God. I want to do things God's way, not my way. Not this little group that I'm part of, this club that I'm a part of's way. God's way. Right here. This is God's way. So, this is our first verse. Hopefully that's helped out and encouraged some of the brethren that when you're asking for wisdom, make sure you're doing it out of faith and a heartfelt desire that when God tells you, you take it and you do it and you live it. And what I mean by what God tells you is back it with Scripture. God will always back it with Scripture. He won't just say something that you can't find in Scripture. All right. Well, like a lot of people do, I have these dreams and visions. He'll back it with Scripture. The Holy Spirit comes in and opens this book to you and teaches you how to live your life and what you're supposed to do. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.